Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called World Domination. It's for two to five players, it takes about 60 to 120 minutes to play, and is for ages, I would say probably 13 and up, and it is by Moz Muzak Games. Uh, in World Domination, you're going to be playing as one of the many political powers in the world, and you're going to be controlling your forces and moving them around as well as controlling locations on a board. It has a feel of a war game, but you're also going to have to check your ego and your popularity while gathering resources. There's going to be time times when you're going to be able to play nukes on each other, or arrange some kind of peace, there's going to be dumb things that happen, and there's also going to be events. There's simultaneous action card management that's going to be played in the game, and you're going to take in uh, turns based on the cards that you've played there. Uh, there's a separate portion which is the board, which is where you're going to be doing all your war and moving and tactical actions, and basically what happens is after the fourth nuke has been uh, removed the game will end or if somebody hits 15 points there'll be one more round of play in which point the game will then end you'll tally up all of your points including any bonus victory points you can get from popularity or from sorry I should say from uh, resources and popularity and then whoever has the most points is the winner of the game world domination anyway let's go ahead and take a look at the board everything included we'll go through all the components and then after that I'll show you what's in the game so here we have the game World Domination and everything included. And as you can see, there's quite a bit in this game. You're going to get five different character boards. We get whether it's going to be North Korea and Kim or Russia and Putin or United States and Trump along with Venezuela and Turkey. They're all different colors and they all come with their own units and resources and a cubes, which is going to be for your popularity and for your ego. You're going to start on six for your popularity and ego for both tracks. If they ever hit zero, you're done for. You're also going to get your little character board or your little... Um, location boards here as well as a peace treaty this is going to be where you're going to be trying to target your brown cards throughout the game and you're also going to get two unique cards to each of the characters or uh, countries in which you're going to choose one of them and that will open up another space where you'll be able to play some more simultaneous action cards down if you can complete that and they also will give you victory points and whatnot as well after you've gone ahead and set up all of your boards then you're going to look at this board over here and this board over here is going to have resources based on the number of players in the game, which country you're choosing, how many resources they get, and which cards they get in front of their tableau. Some are going to get less resources than others, of course, like North Korea. However, there'll be easier cards in which they need for their goals. Whereas the United States has quite a lot more resources. Every base will give you two or more, and every location that you uh, basically control with these little cubes who will give you one. There's certain rules to that which I will explain as well, but you're going to set it up based on the number of players and which countries have been chosen. You're also going to get uh, uh, nuclear markers over here which destroy spaces. You're going to get these little uh, base markers here which you can use to upgrade and whatnot. It's four six, eight, and ten, and as you upgrade them, they're going to cost resources and whatnot. You're also going to get a rule book. You're going to get two different decks of cards. Uh, one is going to be number one world domination cards, number two, as well as, of course, dumbness cards, which can happen when they're drawn. They just get set aside and crazy stuff happens, depending on which world leader it's involved with. Additionally, you'll get some additional tokens, which will be utilized for... Uh, other things throughout the game, but pretty much what you see here is what you get along with, of course, the rule book and the box for the game. All right, let's go ahead and discuss how turns work, and then after that, I will talk about my review. So here you have world domination and everything included, and I've set it up for three players. A couple things to note is one, that some presidents have higher ego than others or popularity or vice versa. In addition, any of the countries that you're not playing with, like we're not playing with Venezuela and Turkey, you're gonna take these little uh, tokens out of the game. You won't be using them specifically for the game in which they are not in. Everybody gets their five cards. And in addition, you're gonna have dumbness cards that will be added to the one and two deck based on uh, having five of them and whether there's ones or twos. It tells you in the rule book how you add them in the deck, so I'm not going to explain it, but I went ahead and did that anyway. You'll also notice that America has more locations, which means more resources, than Russia, and then, of course, 
poor, 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 tiny, tiny North Korea is right here. But everybody's going to get their own cards here, which are unique, and basically objectives they need to make. So like building a wall, for instance, might be America. And your first goal is to build a wall on the Mexican border. This is done by paying the cost. So it's going to cost you 12. It's very expensive. So maybe I want to do that one. You choose basically one of the objectives and remove the other one. You won't be using it for the game. And that will be included for every single country and their dictator and or president, at which point uh, now you're going to have this slot blocked until you're able to pay for it or complete the objective in some way. When you do that, it'll open up a secondary slot where you can play cards down. So pretty useful. Also, make sure to set the uh, resources based on the control. And it tells you uh, on the different bases how much how much uh, resources you get. This one says two with four strength, as well as each cube is going to give you one. And everybody starts off on the victory point tracker at zero here, 15 ending the game, as well as ending the game here on the fourth nuclear missile that has has been disarmed. All the rest of these points are for bonus points regarding any bonus objectives or resources or popularity you have at the end of the game. It also is nice because it tells you how to play the game on the far left hand side there. So if you need to know how a turn goes, it works. Here are your five cards to begin the game. And so let's go ahead and talk about it. You're going to draw five cards. In the beginning of the game, you already have your five. And then you're going to set aside any dumbness cards you might get. So for instance, if I get this one here, Financial Crisis, I would uh, set this aside and draw a new card. And anybody who got that would do the same. It's a, it's a neutral card and it does something interesting. Like the player or players that use the most resources on action cards this round trigger a financial crisis in their country. The player or players lose minus three resources, uh, resource income the next round. So this can hurt you if you do certain actions. That is how dumbness works. And it's based on certain things that are relevant to today's society, I suppose. Then after that, players are going to choose and place card or cards on their board based on the spaces that are open. Uh, so you can go ahead and select any ones that you want. Maybe he'll play this one here. He'll play this one here. I'll just do them randomly and he will play this one here. After you've placed your cards down, uh, you're then going to, uh, choose and, uh, place a target as well. And these are the targets here. It's going to be based on what you have to offer. If you play a piece, it's because you have a nuclear missile you've set down and you can choose to play this down. And then uh, you're going to be flipping it up as well. So I'll go ahead and choose maybe North Korea is my target here. Uh, and he will go ahead and choose maybe the USA and he will go ahead and choose. Oh, I don't know. How about Russia? And those will be set like that. I'll just move them aside, but usually you just set them aside on your board here somewhere. And then after that, everybody is going to flip. And when you flip your cards over, uh, everybody is going to do basically simultaneous actions, so to speak, in which you know, the lowest number on the card, which is here, is the one that gets to go first. And that will also set the turn order for the round. So in this case, we have a 51, a 10, and a 1, which means that the uh, U.S. president will be in the first place position, and then uh, Putin is going to go ahead and be in the second place position. And then finally, it's going to be Kim uh, right here in third. After that, you're going to resolve the cards. So discard all cards on your, in your hand and do nothing this round other than fund uh, blue protect card or project cards. Draw new cards up uh, into your hand limit for the next round. Players who conquer your spaces or attack you this round lose one in popularity, hurting somebody who's not available. So you can use cards like this uh, and they also always have a cost too. So this guy's going to cost one in order to use it. It's at the top right hand side here. Following uh, the on the alert, all of your units get plus one in strength. The units cannot move at all this round, however. So it would cost him two to use this card. And then this guy over here, you put a big uh, tax on imported goods, take one resource from a targeted player. And the targeted player is Russia in this case. So you would take one good and this card costs nothing. Uh, as you can see too, and we'll go ahead and uh, I'll show you that whenever your popularity or your ego gets to zero, the game is over for you. You're out. And if it gets to one, two or three, you're going to suffer a penalty. It says your ego is too low. Uh, you cannot use cards in this space. And that goes for popularity as well. In addition, popularity is uh, gets to zero. You will lose the game as well. If your ego gets to 10, however, the, this will lock in which you cannot change your target until your popularity or your ego goes down. In addition, if you have an, uh, if you have an ego at eight, nine or 10, you can use nuclear missiles against other players, but only if it's eight, nine or 10. 
Uh, if your popularity gets to 10, you're going to gain extra resources, five resources at the end of every single round, which is also very, very useful. After you've resolved and flipped your cards, you're going to go ahead and you set your turn order. Then you're going to have a chance to move units, and it's going to be based on the, the player's order. So in this case, you can move your units, and you can move them up to three spaces. And based on how many spaces you move them is how much strength they're going to have. So if he moves one, two, three, he's going to have to subtract his, from his strength. And your strength is based on the closest base. This is his closest base, so it's four, three, two, and now he only has one strength here. If both units move there, they, he would have a total of two strength with each unit being worth one. And not only that, but uh, it basically what's going to happen is you're going to be trying to control locations. When you move onto a space at the beginning of the next turn, when you move off, you're going to put a token on here, in which case that is going to score you additional resources throughout the game. You can also choose to uh, spend resources and whatnot to basically put down new bases. And when you put a new base down, it's going to cost you the resources based on it, so it's four. Or you can also choose to upgrade, which is going to be six, so on and so forth. Uh, but you're going to go through the, basically the, um, the movement first. And then after you've done the movement, you're going to do any attacks. And attacks are pretty interesting. Attacks work like this. Let's go ahead and say we, I'm just going to show you a very, very basic example. We'll say there's a red here, and we'll say that there is a purple here. This is an 8, and this is a 10. Uh, this is going to be here, we'll say, and this is going to be here. Uh, let's say that this player wanted to attack this one here. He's now at a uh, 9, in which case this one is a, a 8, so he can defeat this guy here. Now, if there was, let's say, two guys here, now this is two 8s, which is 16, and this is a 9. The 16 will win defeating this guy here, but uh, this one here is still higher than one of these guys, so it will be removed. So you're going to be tallying up that way. You can also do the same thing when fighting bases. When you fight bases, you're going to gain victory points based on the number there. When you fight units, for every single unit you defeat, you're going to move your tracker up on this victory point tracker here. So that is basically what you're going to be doing was you move and you attack. After you move and you attack, uh, the next player is going to get to do it, which is red and then purple, following with the buying and upgrade phase. You can simply buy units, uh, and it tells you down below what they cost, as well as bases, and you can only use the amount of units you have, as well as the type of bases you have. When you upgrade a base, it'll cost you the next cost. So if you want to upgrade from four to six, it's going to cost you six resources. From six to eight, it will cost you eight resources, so on and so forth, which will net you more and more uh, bonus resources at the end of the round. So if I actually paid, if I, for instance, was America, and I wanted to make this a six, it's going to cost me six, but it will make my resource or track go up one for use at the end of the round. You'll gain more and more victory points. That could be fairly useful. Um, then everybody else will do the same as well. Finally, you're going to be updating any of your tracks as well as collecting resources. In this case, the United States is going to get six resources in their area. Uh, Russia is going to get uh, three resources. And then poor, poor, tiny Korea is only going to net two resources. After you've done that, you're going to simply restart. You're going to remove, make sure these cards are gone. You're going to go ahead and draw back up to five cards, resolve any dumbness, continue with uh, flipping the cards over, seeing what the turn tracker is, moving units, attacking, buying, upgrading, and uh, so on and so forth. There are certain ways where you can gain points. It's going to be either killing different units, playing your goal cards. Let's go ahead and discuss those, uh, which I'll have a cost. When you remove these, like for instance, if I built the wall, if I paid 15 resources, this has been built. I would gain the three victory points for doing so. And additionally, I can now play two cards on my turn as opposed to one, following all the same basic rules. It's a basically a free bonus card slot, which is pretty useful if you ask me. And uh, you can also gain uh, points per destroying bases, as well as whenever you resolve cards, some of them might give you some bonus points. Additionally, there's geniuses that will pop out that will give you bonuses to your max hand size, as well as some other unique aspects as well. Uh, geniuses are going to basically make you more and more able to do different things throughout the game because of the amount of cards you can have in your hand. Uh, additionally, if you play a nuke and you play peace so, uh, for one of these guys here, you are going to get uh, put, a, put, a, put a token there. And based on your highest token, you're going to score victory points at the end of the game. Additional victory points at the end of the game is going to be uh, your resource income. So if you have 15 resources, that's 15 points. And population number, if you have 10 population, that's 10 points. And any other bonuses you might get. That is the basic idea of the game. At the end, <clears throat> if you 
basically, if you complete all of this at, after the fourth one here, this is going to end the game, which you're going to do your, your bonus victory conditions. Or, of course, you get to 15 points. Then there's one more round of gameplay and the game ends and you score victory points. And whoever has the uh, most victory points is the winner of the game, World Domination. Okay, let's come up and talk about it. All right, so a couple caveats now, caveats for World Domination. The first one is when the dumbness cards pop out of the decks, you're going to basically set them aside and then everybody's gonna place their cards face down first before flipping this over. And then you flip this over Afterwards, you see what happens, and then your cards flip over. So random things can happen. It's kind of like a, oh, we know something bad's going to happen this round, but we have to place our cards down first, just in case I wasn't very clear on that. Additionally, you can start drawing number two cards when you are able to complete your objective that you choose for the country that you're playing with. So you can't simply draw level two cards until that happens, but then you'll have the option of drawing one or two, and uh, there's gonna be dumbness cards in both of them. Um, additionally, you cannot buy units until after you upgrade and or purchase locations. And you have to upgrade from four to six, six to eight, eight to 10, or put down a four on a on the board you can't purchase an eight or whatever then you can purchase units and your units are going to be valued at uh, at the base you're buying them at so if you have a four base it'll cost you four resources for that unit if you have an eight base it's going to cost you eight resources and that's because your unit strength is going to be based on the distance away from your closest base and the, the higher the base is, the stronger your units are anyway i think that pretty much covers the game i didn't go into detail as to how all the 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 board's gonna look at the end of the game. There's gonna be a lot of spaces covered and a lot of spaces with tokens on them or cubes on them that are gonna signify resources as you're walking around with your units. And additionally, you can't go farther than your, uh, than your base allows you to unless you control that region. So you can't go farther than three spaces away from a four unless you control the next space over, in which case your unit will be a zero, but you can still move to that location and you can only move three spaces per unit. Okay. So, what I think about this game. So I actually uh, got a collaborative thing when we were playing this game. I played it a couple times myself. Played it, uh, I had a couple other people play it originally before me because I was busy editing. So I wanted to get their opinion as well and add it to the review. Um, well, first of all, for me, I like the artwork on the cards. I like the artwork on the cards a lot. They're, it's really good and it's also very different than the artwork on the box, as you can see, and on the board that I showed you. Uh, the, the board itself is fine. It just reminds me of kind of any other war, war, like grid-based war game. And I'm not a fan of the artwork on the player boards or the box, personally. I like the artwork on the cards, however, there's a distinct difference in the artwork on the cards. As you can see, there's like a lot of planes. There's a lot of like, it, it looks more like old timey classic and it feels good when I'm when I'm looking at these, but it just kind of feels like it clashes on these like weird cartoony 3D effects. They don't like really look cohesive, but maybe that's just me. Uh, however, there is a theme to the game. It is a political satire type of a theme. And for some people it's gonna be funny and for some people it's gonna be not so funny, which kind of limits, I guess, the audience for the game. However, uh, this game specifically works really well with this scene based on how it plays. The ego of the of the caricatures and the uh, popularity of them associated to the cards they have based on what they want to do. It fits well with the theme. It throws a war game with a little bit of satire, with a little bit of humor involving the different world dictators and presidents and whatnot that have are basically superpowers and some not so much. And it does a good job of that. So for you people who enjoy that type of thing, you're gonna enjoy it. Personally for me, I'm not a huge fan of the theme, but I did find certain aspects funny. I thought that the way they integrated it together, like building the wall and how they explain it, they showed how it was expensive to do. That's all you really have to do and it's just done. And that will give you your objective as opposed to actually having to do anything. There is some humor there. Um, I also got my little piece of paper out for other people. They they. I would agree with this as well, but more than two players. This is not really a two player game in my opinion. I would rather see it three, four, and even five players because that gives you more options for the targets that are gonna come back and go down and whatnot. It associates how the black brown cards are played. And I like the aspect of being able to choose my different targets and whatnot, as opposed to just me and Grant playing and I'm attacking you and obviously you're my target, unless I'm playing a nuke, in which case I'm gonna show a piece. But for the most part, it's just back and forth combat. War games in general are better than when you're having more than two players, unless I think they're like those movement miniature based games. But that's just my opinion. I just also agreed with the group. Uh, 
I also, yes, I agree. The theme is going to be one of those things where it's kind of going to segregate the amount of people that are going to pick it up. And uh, the asymmetrical gameplay, in which everybody's placing the cards down and then flipping them up, that's always, uh, I'm always a fan of that type of gameplay. Always feels like you're doing something throughout this game. You're never waiting on a turn, which in a lot of games like this, it takes a bit of time to get to your turn, and that can be kind of a deterrent for a lot of players. It's also quick, and it's not too complex, but there's a lot you can do, and the aspect of having two different things that you're doing one is working with the board and one is working with your tableau as far as what cards you're playing and trying to gain your missions and whatnot there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in this game for a lot of people who enjoy war games enjoy a little bit of that satire enjoy a little bit of humor they're going to probably enjoy this game in my opinion uh, personally for me it's fine it's right down the line for me just because the theme kind of kills a little bit for me just a little bit um, and the artwork kind of kills it for me as well but the gameplay itself is very good, and I'm very interested to see what it's going to look like. Right now, the prototype is really good. This They did a really good job of this prototype. I'm very impressed with it, and I think it's going to uh, even be even better when it's all, all finished and done. I definitely want to play the uh, finished product of the game. And... Uh, I can say that I did laugh quite a bit while playing this game. For most of you out there who enjoy this type of game, I definitely suggest you taking a look down below for on World Domination, currently on Kickstarter. I think you'll get a kick out of the craziness that added, adds to the complex gameplay and, of course, the fun of the game. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Also, don't forget to check out the game World Domination. One little quick thing I forgot to mention that I really liked about this game is the last eight alien there's only one alien left on earth and if you employ him because the blue cards will be let, let you employ them in front of you then you can start paying one less for all other blue funded cards however if the abandoned alien ship pops up it's going to take the last alien away from earth because he doesn't want to be put to work with you along with him taking all the geniuses that give you hand increase limits on, on them so you don't really want the alien to take away all the geniuses on earth uh, it's just a really cool little aspect to the game and it adds a little bit of extra extra miss to it. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away a ton of stuff. And don't forget to also check out our live streams every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST on our Facebook page at Unfiltered RNG. Definitely take a look at it. It's a lot of fun. We give away a lot of games there as well. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, I look forward to controlling the world in a very dumb way next time.